I'm just kind of sitting around having my coffee this morning, and <laughs> sitting in my bathroom. Oh, well, I, hey, you can see we're just common people here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, just trying to get woke up. And pray you all have a good Sunday morning. And may the Lord be blessing you. Take care of your families. All of you. <laughs> my Lord. We, let's see here. I've been, we've been working on the three feasts uh, of the Lord that the great king should keep. And, and the Lord Jesus, he's going to keep the feasts and presenting the saints of all of the souls uh, before the throne. He's going to confess your name before his father, just like he said he would. You see, if, if he, he's speaking prophecy. This means it's something he will do and he will keep. And to even show you that the Lord Jesus said he would do this. Uh, I'd like to show you a little bit about, uh, for just a minute here before I get into the, the feast there and some other scriptures to show you that King Solomon and King David was the, was the only kings out of Israel that was able, because they were reigning over all of the tribes, over all of the twelve. And... Uh, that presented the royal feast where the great king would go in before the veil, representing the souls before the before the the veil and before the temple and and before the throne of heaven, set so playing its role in the Lord Jesus when He's bringing up the people and gathering up unto Him and presenting them before the throne. You see, I keep telling them this stuff, and and, and they they want to act like it's uh, just a, an expression of speech or. Maybe it's just a parable one day that we might be able to figure out what in the world is he talking about here. These preachers, they look at this stuff and they just act like it's, it's just an expression, as if he's really not going to do that. Well, preachers, you got to stand before God for what you, you teach the people. We all will. And uh, may you get it right. You know, we got we got to teach what was written instead of what these people have made it out to see, say. And that's what's kept a lot of people from the churches because they can hear uh, what these people are bringing and these, these preachers and ministers. And when we open our own Bibles and we go, wait a minute, preacher, uh, you, that's not what the Bible said and that's what you're making it into. And I'm going to use what it said and uh, I'm not going to change it, so I'm sorry. I'm going to bring what, it's, what it was given in here. But I wanted to show you some scriptures where the Lord Jesus was talking to John, even from heaven, from up there sitting at the right hand of his majesty. <laughs> uh, he's not on the earth when he's speaking this stuff on to John to write these things down. He, and he, he's already talked to the church, you know, presented the things about what was going on in the churches that they were working with and trying to teach. And uh, uh, at the beginning of the book of Revelations, but you're, you'll notice right here in Revelations chapter 3. Let's see what the Lord Jesus says. You see, he's speaking this from heaven. He's not on the earth when he's, when he's speaking these things for John to write down and record. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 5, it says, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. You see, this is a prophecy and a promise. It's not a parable, it's not an illustration. The Lord Jesus will keep his word in that day that the saints were whenever they're presented before the throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now let's bring it down here into verse 11 of the same chapter 3. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold thou that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Watch verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. What's he doing talking about his father again? You people has made him out to be the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Sorry. Your oneness. 
You're Jesus' only ministry out there that's overtaken the world. Why did he say this from heaven? Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Who's he referring to? Himself? Uh -uh, sorry. This is the son talking. The Lamb of Almighty God here. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. Who's that? His father. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Who's he talking about? Who's he referring to? Himself again? He's sorry. You people need to use what your Bible says. Instead of following these preachers that's made it out by their own belief and their own understanding. You see, they're not willing to accept what their own Bible's read and then they hold them up and tell everybody we need to take heed to the Word of God. Why can't they do it? Well, they got a big name. But we're supposed to be using what he said. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Hallelujah. Verse 13. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now let's bring it back down here in the same chapter. And let's go to verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You people's made your Bibles out into what it didn't even say by your own thinkings because it's famous and viral around the world. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. But be zealous, therefore, and repent. What's verse 20, people? Is this just an expression of speech? 20 and 21? Or is this just a parable that maybe one day God's people can figure out what in the world was the Lord Jesus saying? You blind guys. Let's see what he said. And he's speaking this from heaven, from the throne, from sitting at the right hand of his majesty. When he's at the throne, he's not limited to staying at the throne. He can go anywhere he wants. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Pay attention to verse 21, people. Your oneness, your Jesus only ministry out there. Well, at least you heard Jesus. At least you got that part down. It's a shame you don't know the Father. It's a shame you ain't figured out who the Most High really is. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down. Does it say what myself? Come on, what's your Bible say, people? I'm not going to change it. What does your Bible say? I'm not going to use that new revise. Oh, no. Uh -uh. No, they changed it, practically everything in there. It don't even say it anymore. What's wrong with using it the way it is? To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father. What's he doing talking about his father? What's he doing about saying, this, this is my father's throne. This is my father's th kingdom up here. Set down with my father in his throne. Why can they not hear the voices of the heavenly? They can't. They only hear the voice of Christ. Well, at least they'd hear that. Verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You see, they kind of got me down as just an end-time teacher and an end-time preacher. Well, i got news for you guys. I can go from Genesis to Revelations and teach every level there is. I'm sorry. I was, I, hey, I was raised up in this. I messed up my life out there in the world too, just like everybody else. I'm not sitting there trying to claim that I'm a saint and I got everything right and perfect. Hey, I got my own troubles I got to get straightened out. I got to get myself to the kingdom. How about you? 
So you see, I can bring every level there is, the Holy Ghost and fire, and the gifts of the Spirit, you know, how to, how to handle the, the church and how to take care of trouble. I can do it all. And I teach it all. I just haven't had a chance to really get into the, the Holy Ghost and fire and the gifts of the Spirit and, 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 and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I, I can do it all, people. But look at where we're at today. Are we not to even be bringing the end time insight because of what they're, they're putting upon this, this country now? Hey, people are going back to the churches. They're all looking around saying, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, what's going on? This ain't right. This ain't right. And now they're going to push it upon all of us and tell the churches they just need to get used to this and accept this. Yeah, now people are finally going back. They're going back because they know that things is getting close up, up to the doorsteps of him parting those clouds and saying, come up hither in a day and hour and when they know not. Oh, glory. He's going to part those clouds. And is your name going to be found in there? Well, I pray you're right. Well, nobody's challenging your salvation. And nobody's doing that. But when they just want to say, I'm just an end time teacher, well, go sit down. Go sit down. Because I can do everything in this Bible and I'm not trying to bring it up, uh, brag upon myself, but I was raised in this. I've studied this. I've done my prayer and fasting. And these preachers cannot bring the insight of the end times. And if they, if they were, were hearing from God, how come they cannot put anything in alignment other than, than what they bring? They, they can't even make common sense out of it when they bring their end times. I did my prayer and fasting. I done my study. And I still study every day. I talk to the Lord every day. I, I bet I pray out there over driving that 18 wheeler a, a hundred times a day driving down the highway. I, I'm <laughs> praying, Lord, don't let me run over somebody. Lord, don't let them put, run into me. All the wrecks that I see up and down the highways where the, you know that how could they even have lived out of that? But things are at the doorsteps of what we're getting ready to see and right here upon us. And I wanted to show you some more confirmation uh, about the three royal fees and uh, uh, that the great king was to keep. That the preachers out there, they just don't teach. Well, that's what happens, preacher, when all you want to do is stay in the New Testament and you ain't willing to see the things of old and to see the relations of how it plays a role in, in, in gathering the people and the harvest of, of, the, of, the, of the, the, the land and, and the fruit of the trees and the crops that's in the ground and, and even the cotton fields that comes at the let end of, of, of its season uh, before the ground freezes. you got to see that cotton field in a bloom of a ball of a soul that's getting ready to be harvested and brought in when they bale all these bales back to and bale them up at, at so large that they just slide them in the back of an 18-wheeler and take off of the bale to take them into the processing plants so they can make a product out of that cotton of all different things that they do is cotton for the ears cotton for the, for the medicine bottles and you know the clothes that we wear you know they, they make it into a product but they got to gather it out of all of it and sift through it and clean it and get it nice and clean and get all the stems out of it and now they, they're bailing it out see it in the people and when that harvest goes through and that harvester he goes through the first time he goes through that cotton field uh, it may be sometime in the middle of the summer after it's been grown and it, the wheels are nice and white, and it just covered the fields of white all the way through the through the farms. And he'll set that the teals of the combines about half teal and about halfway down, and he'll come and knock the tops off of those the the, the cotton field, <coughs> just taking the tops off of it. But he's not getting it all the way to the ground. And I was so curious. I'd go, but, but but why is he doing that? How come he isn't bringing it all the way to the ground? Because it looks like it looks like some cotton is still been left on the stems. Uh, it's like he's not getting it all. And I've got some good, th cool things to show you in this. See those cotton balls as a soul. But as he came through, the, 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 the combines was coming through, knocking off the tops of the cotton, leaving stems and cotton still on, on, on the stems growing. There was all kinds of cotton all over the ground. Down in the, you know, all over the ground. And the ground's just totally white. They didn't make it into the combine. They didn't make it into the harvest and to be into the processing. They go to the ground. 
the farmer, he says, well, hey, it would cost us a fortune to gather enough people to go through all of these rows and to start picking up every last piece of cotton that's, that's fall to the ground. We just count it as a waste because it's going to cost us way, way too much to hire the laborers to get on their hands and knees and pick up every last piece of cotton and put it in the sacks like they used to do in the olden days. We just count it as a loss. See those little bitty cotton balls that's just covering the ground and laying upon the ground as a soul that bloomed and as a person who was born. See it in the people, the mothers and fathers and grandmas and grandpas and the children and the grandchildren. See it as a, as a, as a soul, but yet they bloomed, but now they're on the ground. They count it as a loss. But he's going to let those stems grow even more and more and more and give it a little more rain. Maybe he might flood those, 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 those crops with some, with some irrigation water to give it plenty more water and give us more time to grow. And right there before the, 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 the summer be over, before fall hits, now he's coming back through and he's bringing his combines down to the ground. And now he's going to gather every last piece of cotton he can possibly gather off the tops of those fields. And he's bringing the combines practically to the edge of the ground. To work. And he's going to grab every piece of cotton he can possibly get his hand and bring it into the combines and into, into the machinery so he can bale it up and bale it up and, and create all of these great big bales to slide in the back of it. Now he's got another harvest people. He's got another one. And I was in such a much question. I said, but, but but why didn't he bring it down to the because he said, son, if I bring it all the way to the ground in the first in the first gathering, I'm going to lose a second harvest. I, it, I got to give it time to grow some more because more stems are going to bloom and we got more seeds that's getting ready to burst. And I'll lose the second harvest if I bring it all the way to the ground and take it to the to, all the way to the ground. I'm going to lose my second harvest that I can still bring in before the ground freezes. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. I gave him a hug. I said, I can see this in the people. I can see this in the cotton being a soul. But look at the ones that was laid upon the ground. He's brought them teals all the way to the ground. And yet we got cotton laid all over the ground. And I said, but what about the cotton that's on the ground? He said, we count it as a loss. It would cost way too much to go through this field with all those people on their hands and their backs like we did when we were growing up. We just count it as a loss. You see those ones who think their names is in the Lamb's Book of Life. You see these ones that they bloomed in, on this, it's this earth and became a life, but yet they wasn't found worthy to be gathered into the harvest, to be presented to become something and to be made into something. See it in the harvest of the Lord. He's going to bring it all the way to the ground before the ground freezes. And then what those farmers will do once he's got those bales and bales that just goes on and on, could load hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of 18-wheelers and just shoving those bales in the back of the of the 18-wheeler when they take off with them. Now he's going to set the ground on fire. Now he's going to burn off the fields and get all the fields burned off. Hey, it running all the snakes out of there. Hey, it, hey they're, they're boot scooting buggy. They don't like fire. It's burning off all the bugs. It's burning all that. Hey, it because that, that's laying out there and, and going plumb silly in, in the ground. And you see now he's going to take his tiller and he's going to till even that cotton and count it as a loss back into the ground. See it in a soul. See it in the harvest of the Lord's people, of, of the separated harvests. He can't bring it all at the same time because he's going to lose a second, another harvest. Even those orchards, uh, harvest uh, in the orchards and the trees and the, and the fruits of the trees. They'll, they'll harvest those trees three and four times a year before the ground freezes. Some of those fruits, they fell off and they went to the ground and they spoiled. They bloomed, but yet they didn't get picked and be part of the harvest to brought in. 
the spoiled, and the ground even receives as that, that sweet savior, uh, savor <laughs> of, of, the, of the, the juices of the apples and the oranges, and it even gets back into the ground. So when it brings and blooms again, it even has the, the, the juice into the ground. Oh my goodness! I want to show you a, some more scriptures here of of how, what King Solomon and King David kept. If you turn in your Bible real quickly here, and uh, let's go, let's go into uh, oh, let's see, it's Second Chronicles. Let's time. I got my marker in here this time. Oh, if it didn't fall, it didn't fall out. <laughs> I'm having a time of it. Those preachers, they got it made. I got staffs doing this for them, pushing a button, got the words on the screen. Well, hey, all right. We love the Lord, too. Look at Second Samuel. Oh, I said Samuel. See, I, I, my tongue getting tied. Here, I done told you to go to Chronicles. I, just seeing if he's paying attention. <laughs> hey, Daddy used to have fun with this, and I went, what? Second Chronicles, chapter 8. And let's look at verses 12 and 13. So stay here with me here. This is after uh, Solomon had built the temple and got everything put together and everything ready. Here is a recording to where Solomon kept the days of the feast and even the offerings and that was to be given for the sacrificing, making the atonement so the high priest could go in and do the sprinkling behind the veil. Once a year, the high priest was to bring, uh, but that was to be done at the end of the year. At the end, after all of those other harvests had already been met, then the, the, the high priest could go behind the veil and do the sprinkling upon the mercy seat. But the royal king, because he was of Judah, he, he, he wasn't allowed to go behind that veil. He was only allowed to go into the royal temple three times in the, in the season when they brought after they brought in the harvest in presenting and going before the veil with his scepter, saying, Lord, I, I've gathered your souls. I present them before you, O Lord. Forgive us, O Lord, for we have sinned and accept our sacrifices, and, 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 and to receive us un, 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 unto you, O Lord. You see, three times he was to do this, representing the feasts and the king going in. He was of, the, of Judah. He wasn't allowed to go into the temple, but only three times, after all of the tribes had brought in their harvest, and even at the end of the year, of presenting the souls. King Solomon and King David was the only two kings out of the history of all of Israel that was al allowed to go before the veil three times after the feasts were brought in because they were the only two kings that reigned over all of the nations and over all of the tribes. After Solomon died, they were separated with their king to the north and Judah would keep one tribe. You see, they couldn't. The king couldn't go in. The the the, the kings had their own uh, temple of worship. Even themselves, there by the palace, because they wasn't allowed to go inside that temple because they was not of the tribe of Levi. Only three times in the year was he to go before the veil. Sorry about that. My phones are ringing. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, now look at look at verse uh, eleven of Second Chronicles chapter eight. And Solomon brought up. Look, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here we go again. I looked away. Messing up here. Verse twelve. Uh, verse twelve of Second Chronicles chapter eight. Uh, then Solomon offered burnt offerings unto the Lord on the altar of the Lord, which he had built before the porch. 13. Here we have the confirmation of the feast that the great king was to go and to go in. Even after certain rate, every day offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbaths and on the new moons, and on the solemn feast, notice this next, after the three times in a year, 
even in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks this is the, the harvest we're waiting for people and in the feast of tabernacles which was to take place at the end of the year the season after all of them had been brought in prior to and now he's presenting all of, of the saints before the temple before the throne and presenting them to heaven see it in the Lord's feast of him gathering the people because there'll be one last final preserving of his royal people uh, uh, in the great tribulation when that comes uh, to show you another confirmation we got first Kings uh, what do I got here? I got 1 Kings and chapter 9, verse 25. So I can stay here right there with it. Look at verse 25 of 1 Kings chapter 9. Here's a confirmation again. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar which he built unto the Lord. And he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord. This is where the incense altar was inside, people. It was inside before the veil. This is when he would be allowed, because he's of Judah, to go in before the veil and present that royal scepter, Lord, and, and the incense going up and getting the incense of the incense altar. Uh, of that, the, even the prophet spoke of old that, that the, 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 the incense of, of the fragrance going up stood for the souls being presented before the throne and before heaven and uh, burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord and so he finished the house so you can see here into the recordings that it was King Solomon and King David were the only two kings who kept the royal feast because and was able to go in because they're reigning over all of the tribes of Israel where after Solomon died, now there's ten to the north. They're bringing their harvest in up to the uh, up to the king of the north and up to their, their 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 palace up there. And then, yes, sometimes they would come down and and tr present before the royal temple there in Jerusalem as well. But they couldn't. The king couldn't go in because he didn't reign over all of the tribes. See it in the feast of the Lord and in the feast of the kingdom of heaven when the Lord raptures his people out of here and says, Come out of here, my people. Oh, we're getting ready. And it's walking into the doorsteps. If this thing keeps going on the next 20 years, even in my estimation, I'm just I'm just giving you my own, my own opinion. If it makes it another 20 years and he hasn't said, Come out of here by then and, and gathered his people up there to present them before, uh, I would say myself something's wrong because out of all the patterns I've seen out of the half a time and the times and the times that's recorded in and then the, and then it's the opposite in the in the in the in the New Testament versus the old because now it's saying times times and a half of times and when you see what sets those times and half a half of times and what was actually into a seal of setting the times of the giving of the Messiah we're walking out to the doorsteps of, of it being a perfect pattern that's always been met right here in this Bible that they don't know how to see. If it goes past the next 20 years, I'm gonna, I would say, that, Lord, something's wrong. It's got to be wrong, you know. But I'm just giving you my estimate. You know, I'm not giving no hour. I'm not going to give a day. I'm not going to. I don't do that. Uh -uh. No, I know better than that. But we know that the times are upon us and the things are coming and. Uh, may your hearts be ready and right before the Lord. Uh, we all got to get things right and, and stop doing things we was a doing because, man, we're running out of time. That's all there is. May, may you, all of you be blessed. May, may the Lord watch over your families, your homes, your children, all of it, and help you to, in your finances and in your homes. And, and those who's needing a healing, but, hey, you trust God and say, Lord, Lord, I got to call upon you. These doctors are good, Lord, but I, I need you to help me in this healing. 
and may you be healed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. May you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. May the baptism of the Holy Ghost fall upon thee. May you fall over in, in, into the Spirit. And, and, and then you could say, that there's no way I could say that was of myself. May you be baptized in, the, in His Spirit and may it be upon you. May it come upon you in your mind and your heart and just may it just let it go and praise ye the Lord. It is a gift of the nine gifts of the Spirit. May you receive in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. May you receive a word from on high and be blessed.